Yo, what is up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Homie Hector here. And today we got this 2014 Honda Civic with a 1.8 liter engine. And it's in here because the battery keeps dying overnight. Customer told me that she had two batteries replaced and they also swapped out the alternator. And the problem is still there. She's tried some shops around where she lives and they told her they don't do this kind of work. She saw one of my videos where I did another parasitic drain. That one I believe was a 2006 Honda Civic and it had a constant parasitic drain. This one right here is intermittent so it's a little bit more complicated. I was testing it yesterday. I wasn't able to duplicate the parasitic drain. I let it sit overnight. The battery was fine in the morning. The car started right up. There was no parasitic drain overnight. So right now, I'm gonna run you guys through my parasitic drain process. What I do to check for a drain and hopefully this helps you guys out. All right, so the first thing I did when I got the Civic was I did my usual run around. So I checked for dome lights. I checked for lights on the visors, make sure those those vanity lights weren't staying on. Make sure the radio wasn't staying on, causing your battery to drain overnight. Make sure that the AC system is not giving you any problems. Also look for aftermarket accessories. If you have a phone charger, that can also give you a drain. So anything that goes on your power outlet, like this one has a power outlet, it has a USB and an HDMI. Make sure nothing's connected there. Look at the glove box, make sure there's no lights in there. So once I did all that, it was time to get to the fuses so that I can identify the circuit that's giving us the intermittent parasitic drain. Okay, now in this 2014 Honda Civic, we have a fuse box right here under the dash and we have another one under the hood. So we're going to need access to both fuse boxes so that we can do our checks for the parasitic drain. So let's go under the hood. Let's start over there first. And I'll show you what to do there and then we'll come back to this one. All right, now since we're going to have the hood open, we got to make sure that there's no lights under the hood that can affect our parasitic drain testing. Now, a lot of newer cars don't have lights under the hood anymore, but they do have a hood latch switch. Now, if you have a hood latch switch, you want to go ahead and latch this to make the car think that the hood is closed so that you can do your testing. Or you can do what I'm going to do, which is bypass the switch so that if I open and close the hood, the car will never know that the hood is open. All right, so check it out. Right now we have all the doors closed. The trunk is closed. The only thing that's open is the hood. Now let me show you what happens when I try to lock this car. You can hear the door locks, but there's no beep or no horn. I should have a beep or a horn, which activates the security system and then puts this car to sleep. Okay, so I have the hood latch switch connector right here. This one goes right under here. So all I'm gonna do is take a little jumper wire, go across these two terminals, and that's gonna make the car think that the hood is closed, and this way we can go on with the testing. I bypassed the connector right there. I just used a little resistor. You can use a little piece of wire, a paper clip, just make sure that whatever you use doesn't damage the connector. All right, so now with that resistor in there, this car should think that the hood is closed. So let me show you what it's supposed to sound like when I hit the remote. There's a beep. So now all the modules should go to sleep shortly. Then we can start doing our parasitic drain testing at the fuse box. All right, so we're also going to need access to the fuse box that's under the dash over here. So we need this door open, but we need to make the car think that this door is closed. The way we're going to do that is by latching the door over here. All right, so we got the door latched, but if you take a look inside, we still have the dome lights that are on. And that's because we have this switch over here that we need to close. Okay, now one thing to note is if you have one of these smart keys, you wanna lock the car, but you wanna be away from the car because if you lock it right here, this door has a sensor that senses when the key is nearby and it's gonna unlock the doors. So you wanna lock it and walk away. Keep it at least five feet away from the car. So check it out, I'm gonna lock it. It beeps but because I'm near the car, it's gonna unlock it. So now we have access to this fuse box under the dash, the one under the hood. Now we can start our testing and check for a parasitic drain. All right, so everything that I just showed you is exactly what I did yesterday to check for this drain. I took my scope, took my amp clamp, wrapped it on the negative, and checked for a parasitic drain. And I had nothing. Then what I decided to do was take this car on a test drive, and when I was driving it, I activated the headlights, the wipers, the AC, the radio, pretty much any accessory inside, I was trying to use it to trigger something to see if this drain would appear. I came back, turned on the scope, hook up the amp clamp, put it around the negative, and I have a drain. It's a couple hundred milliamps, so I start pulling fuses right away. I go to the fuse box right here, start pulling fuses. When I get to this bottom fuse, 10 amps, that's fuse number 29, and it's labeled backup. So I'm thinking, okay, something's up with the backup lights. But that's not what that means. 
that fuse is labeled backup because it's telling you back the fuck up you're in for some fish so the next thing i do pull the fuse the drain goes away okay when i put it back the drain does not come back so back up all right here's another way you can actually do this test what i got here is a battery disconnect switch blade type kind of tool here is a battery cable here's a terminal you put this tool in between that in series like if it was the ammeter but what this allows you to do is now you can go drive it with this tool on here you come back you park your car and you lock it the way the customer would do it so you're basically going to duplicate whatever the customer is doing so that you can try to find the parasitic drain positive to the positive post and then negative to the terminal basically all the current is flowing through this switch right now not through the clamps but as soon as i open this switch we'll get an amp reading on the multimeter so now that's what we have we have around 240 to 50 milli amps all right so at this point you can start either doing that voltage drop test across the fuses and then that way you can isolate the drain and that's what i did did all the way all these fuses till i got to the bottom one fuse 29 10 amps that is the backup fuse but that powers up a bunch of things inside so what i'm going to do right now is just pull the fuse because i already know the draw is in that circuit i'm going to show you what happens to this amper straw just pop it on the fuse and pull it out and you can see it's one of these chingaderas so there it is focus on the drop it dropped to 150 steady and then eventually it'll make its way down to what is an acceptable draw right around 27 milliamps so give it time all right so right now we're at 40 milliamps about 20 between 20 and 30 milliamperios okay so the drop is definitely in that circuit now let's go look at a diagram and see what's on that fuse okay right here we're looking at the fuse index for the underhood fuse relay box and we're going to look for fuse 29 10 amps which is all the way at the bottom and you can see right here fuse 29 10 amps and this is everything that it feeds okay so it feeds the audio navigation unit audio unit lighting control unit lighting control unit sensor dlc gauge control module for the speedometer for the tack we have the hands-free link control unit immobilizer which doesn't apply because this is without keyless. We have the information display unit, keyless access control unit, MICU, multi-information display unit. I didn't see the power window master switch on the diagram, and I did not see this hands-free link. This immobilizer does not apply, and this automatic lighting control unit does not apply. Okay, so back to the diagram, and then back to the car. Okay, we're gonna go into the power distribution diagram. Now, when you come into these diagrams, you got to make sure that you're on the correct one. As you can see, this one says power distribution circuit, except hybrid with keyless access. That's our guy right there. All right. Now I'm going to take you straight to fuse 29, 10 amps, and that is on diagram number two out of six. So here is fuse 29, 10 amps in the underhood fuse relay box. It comes out on this white wire and it goes into the under dash fuse relay box, splits off to the left into this wire comes down on this wire and then splits off to the right into the MICU. The MICU is just the body control module that Honda uses and this one is built right into the fuse box. So if this is our issue here or this is bad, we have to replace the entire fuse box and have it reprogrammed. From here it feeds this leg right here. On connector Q, it comes down this leg into this junction box and out of this junction box number two. All right, so everything that this fuse 29 10 amps feeds is right here. Gauge control module for the TAC, gauge control module for the speed, the information display unit, the DOC, the radio, the keyless access control unit, and the sunlight sensor for the automatic lights. The first thing I did was I found these connectors, connector K, Q, and R. These are on the back of the fuse box. So I went to connector K and I unplugged it. When I unplug connector K, my drain was still there. So this means that my drain is not in the gauge control module for the RPMs or for the vehicle speed. Then I came to connector Q. I unplugged connector Q. 
and my drain was gone. So that means that my drain is somewhere on the display unit, on the DLC, on the audio unit, on the keyless access control unit, or on this sunlight sensor. Then I found this center junction box one. I found center junction box two. If I unplug center junction box two, I'm unplugging these three modules from the circuit. So that's what I did. I unplugged this center junction box number two and my drain was gone. So that means that my drain is not here and it's not over here. My drain is in one of these three modules down here. So I'm working with the radio, the keyless access control unit, and the sunlight sensor. This sunlight sensor is right on top of the dash, close to the windshield. You can just pop it up and unplug it. I did that and my drain was still there. Now we have the keyless access control unit and we have the radio. The radio is not that easy to disconnect. You have to take a bunch of stuff apart so you can unplug it. So I went to the keyless access control unit. This one lives right above the push start button and it's easier than the radio to access. I unplugged this and my drain went away. So now I knew that my drain was in the keyless access control unit circuit. That doesn't mean this unit is bad. Now that we know where our drain is at, we have to look at everything that's connected to this module. If everything checks out good, then the module itself is bad. So now we have to look at the keyless access control unit to see what's involved in that circuit. All right, so here's a quick look at the keyless access control unit and everything that's involved in the circuit. So we have antennas on the doors, we have the remote, we have the MICU, we have door locks, we have door switches, door handles, lock switches, the trunk lid. There's a lot of door locks and door handles involved with the keyless access control unit. They talk to the MICU, the MICU receives signals and sends signals back to unlock and lock the doors. And that right there gave me a clue as to where we need to be looking for this parasitic drain. As you guys can see right now, the drain is there. So I have my amp clamp hooked up around the battery negative. And you can see the battery voltage is constantly going down. And we have a drain of about 270 milliamps. So let me put this on a multimeter so it's easier for you to see on low amps. And we have about 270 milliamps. I went around every door and I just gave it a light tap around where the actuator is at. Right rear door, same thing. Front passenger, same thing. Now let me see if I can catch this for you. And this is why I like looking at it on the graph. Right now the drain, I don't know if you can see the number, but it's 280, 290 milliamps. Our battery voltage is at 12.42. Now if you leave this for eight, nine hours overnight, this is gonna drain your battery. So watch, I'm gonna go hit the door, I'm gonna smack it just like I showed you guys. And this is why I like the graph. You're gonna see it happening and it's pretty cool. So let me go smack the door and see if it happens. There it is. Now we're back down to around 70, 40, 80 milliamps. And just so you can see, I'll take you guys back to the multimeter. Put you on multimeter and we'll go to low amps. And right now we're at 93, 52, 70. Now we're at 150 milliamps, 186, 180, 90, 200. All right, see, this is why I like looking I prefer the graph, but you guys can see it right there. You can use a multimeter. I just like using the scope because you can see everything happening right then and there. So 190 milliamps, close to 0.2. That is a parasitic drain. Uh, I'm gonna go smack it again. There it is. So now we're back down to we're at 20, 30, 40 milliamps, 60 milliamps. So there it is. We'll see what we can find in there. All right, so here's the driver's side door. All we have to do is remove this little cover. There's a screw in there, and we're gonna remove this window switch chingadera. There's also a screw in there. So one screw, two screws, take that off, and then we can pop this panel out. Now we could have potentially had a bad window switch or a bad door lock switch because the MICU does control this. But when I unplugged this, I had my ammeter on there and the draw was still there. So I knew this wasn't my issue. Now when we smack the door on this side, there's potentially two things that can give us the issue. One being the door lock actuator, the other being the door handle. 
Okay, so inside here we have the connector for the outer door handle. I unplugged this connector and the drain was still there. Then I came to the door lock actuator, but the problem here is when I unplugged this door lock actuator, the dome lights actually came on. Okay, take a look at our driver's door lock actuator. Inside this actuator are two switches. These two switches are inputs for the MICU. So what happened was when I unplugged this connector right here at the door lock actuator, the MICU saw a changing signals on these wires so it turned on the dome lights. The same way it would if you hit lock or unlock on your key fob, it moves these switches, sending a signal to the MICU and either turning the dome lights on or turning them off. So the last thing to do here was to swap out this door lock actuator and verify that our parasitic drain was gone. So let's go back to the car and check it out. Okay, I'm gonna lock it and we're gonna keep an eye on this. Okay, now we're gonna open up this switch blade let all the amperage flow through the meter and we're gonna keep an eye on it. Okay, you can see about 670, 680 on the multimeter. That is pretty high. That means some of the modules are still awake. So we gotta give it a little bit of time to go to sleep. Probably throw some NyQuil in the tank. Help it sleep a little faster. <laughs> there it is. Nice, okay, look at that. 30 milliamps, 30. 30, 20, there you go, 20 milliamps, 20 something, between 20 and 30 milliamps. So there it is, 2014 Honda Civic with a parasitic drain on fuse number 29, which is a 10 amps labeled backup. I'm gonna put links down in the description to everything that I used in today's video. So check that, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. I just went in there, and Hector is gonna be running three Honda Civics with spoon engines.